In the fourth segment of the overview tutorial, we shall examine the generation of objects of revolution, sweep objects, and lofts. The respective tools are located in the second derivatives palette, which is in the fifth row, right column of the modeling tools. The first two tools in this palette behave similarly in the way of generating objects of revolution. Two components are necessary for such operations, a source and an axis of revolution. The axis of revolution can be any segment that we draw or the axis of any reference plane. In this example, we will use the vector line drawing tool to create a 2D shape on the ZX plane for the source, and we will use the Z axis for the axis of revolution. With the Revolve tool selected, click on the source shape, then on the Z axis. This invokes the Revolve Edit dialog from which a number of options that affect the revolve shape can be selected. Edit dialogs such as this one allow you to preview your object before its generation is finalized. This is done when the edit option is on in the revolve options dialog. For now we leave all the options at their defaults. Click OK to exit the dialog. The object is generated by revolving the shape around the z-axis. Revolved objects can also be edited after their initial generation, again using the Revolved Object tool. With the tool active, click on the Martini glass. In the Revolve Edit Options dialog, change the model type from Faceted, which is the default, to Smooth. Exit the dialog and observe the difference in the glass. You probably noticed the first Martini glass was comprised of planar faces, while the second of curved surfaces. This is the distinct difference between Faceted and Smooth objects. More information can be found in section 4.0.1 of the manual. Next, we look at the helix tool. Undo the previous action and draw a rectangle on the ZX reference plane as shown. This will be used as the source. With the helix tool, click on the source, then on the Z axis. This invokes the helix edit dialog, and similar to the revolve edit dialog in the previous steps, you can further edit your shape. Click OK to exit the dialog and observe the result. Unlike the revolve tool we used previously, the helix tool continuously revolves the source around the axis of revolution while it also moves it up, creating a helical type object. Next we shall look at the sweep tool. Using the polygon tool, create a source shape. Use the spline tool to create a path. With the Sweep tool selected, click on the Source, then the Path, and the Sweep Edit dialog is invoked. You can change a variety of parameters to control the sweeping process. Click OK to exit the dialog and observe the result. The object is generated from the source shape sweeping along the path. Our next tool is the Loft tool, which generates a smooth surface across any number of source lines. Note that all the source lines need to be either all open or all closed shapes. We begin by creating a number of smooth lines on the ZX plane using the B spline cubic drawing tool. This drawing tool is similar to the vector line drawing tool, except the resulting line is a smooth spline curve through each point clicked instead of a straight vector line through each point. With the self copy modifier set to self, the move tool selected and the perpendicular switch active, Arrange the two smaller lines along the y-axis, as we show here. Then with the self-copy modifier set to a single copy, make one copy of the two smaller lines and position them along the y-axis, as we show here. The Move tool and Perpendicular switch should still be active. These five lines are a series of sources and can be thought of as cross-sections of the intended object. Using the Pick tool, select each source in the proper order. The pick order is significant because the surface will loft through the sources in the order they were picked. With the Loft tool selected, click any blank area and the Loft Edit dialog is displayed. You can change a variety of parameters to control the lofting process. Click OK to exit the dialog. The object is generated by lofting a smooth surface through each selected shape. The Loft tool can also loft a surface between existing 3D objects. Using the primitive tools in the first row, 
create a hyperbolic paraboloid and a paraboloid. Now move the paraboloid above the hyperbolic paraboloid as we show here with the self copy modifier set to self and the move tool selected. Also be sure that the perpendicular switch is active. With the loft tool active and the topological level set to segment, click on the segment on top of the hyperbolic paraboloid, then click on the bottom segment of the paraboloid. Observe that the loft tool uses surface data of the existing object to remain tangent to the existing object. Click the OK button and the loft object is generated. You can unghost the original objects if needed. This concludes the fourth segment of the overview tutorial.